so this uh, this talk is uh, if you are a product owner, if you are a manager or anything, uh, and you are down in the uh, the dungeons of the uh, of, a, of a bank, and you are um, you're actually changing your systems of records, and you're saying, you know, I'm in an area where I have 2.2 billion calls a day to specific modules. Uh, I want to change that. Uh, I want to do it. I want to go on cloud. I want to build REST APIs uh, so people can consume. Now, um, the journey I'm going to talk about here today, and the story I will tell, is sort of some of the frustrations you get. It's also about uh, when you and uh, just here or just hearing the, the previous talk about all the cool stuff with the gateways, and I was like, oh, that's that's my answer, that's my answer, until the last piece where it goes, oh, but security is uh, it's a bit dangerous. That's, it's it's got to be centralized, and then boom, all dies. Um, but that's sort of the things that we struggle with. Uh, I'm going to explain what we struggle with. I'm also going to talk about what um, uh, what we've done to actually also grow internal consumption. Yeah. My name is John. I am a, an API product owner uh, in customer information. We have all take care of all the customer data. I've been in Danske Bank for uh, more, almost five years, um, and uh, just going to give you some uh, some context about what is uh, Danske Bank and uh, Danske Bank in size. We are a Nordic bank, uh, universal. We uh, cover all the different uh, financial uh, aspects in the private and also in the uh, retail and also on, 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 on corporates and institutions. Uh, plus 21,000 uh, employees, whereof uh, I think 3,895 uh, um, working IT. And they are situated in, uh, in uh, strategic sites uh, in Lithuania, in India and in Denmark. That makes us uh, the biggest IT provider in Denmark um, uh, to, in terms of uh, infrastructure, in terms of applications, and also in terms of people. Just so you have an idea about it. So um, I'll stop the uh, commercials and actually just talk about, so I think it goes for all incumbent banks. Uh, that uh, what is it that we are actually, what are, what are our strategy? And I think I'm not gonna spend too much, but the strategy is you have a customer up here, that's Jack. You, we all want Jack to be happy. Uh, we all want to provide him a variety of different cool services. Uh, and that's of course uh, in his everyday life. Uh, and we have, uh, of course, us being a bank, uh, so somewhere in the center or somewhere in this picture being interconnected with startups, fintechs, and uh, also partners. And it's all about providing Jack with uh, some stellar digital service or any other service he, he wants, so that we are in his mindset all the time, or when he wants to do his payments, but also if he want to play soccer, if I have to do something mobile payment to the, to the trainer or something like that, that's where we want to be. Pretty simple uh, in terms of uh, what banks are actually targeting. We are all want to be some sort of a Amazon uh, uh, financial ecosystem or something like that where we want to play. Uh, and of to, the, um, to some of the simplicity in this, well, it's very, very simple. But if you didn't look into what we have in banks that has to provide this interconnectivity where we get the fintechs on board and all that stuff, then what do we actually see? And I guess like many of you sort of know uh, this picture. Um, especially if you're in, in a bank and you have more than 147 years on your back, uh, you probably have something like this. You have uh, what I call architecture complexity. That is, well, this system has been here for 50 plus years. They have evolved, they've grown. It's part of our heritage. It becomes difficult to improve stuff. It becomes difficult to actually uh, um, fix, improve, build. You need to go to the specific, specific guy called Michael who can solve everything for you. Uh, that's one thing. Then you have the uh, outdated technologies, like speed of change. If we want to provide Jack with some cool digital services, how do we then provide Jack with these services when it takes us up to a half year to a year to develop something? I'm putting it a bit on the, uh, on the edge, but that is sort of the feeling that people get when they, when they actually sort of work in the bank. Uh, also, the business feels, and sometimes this is, of course, something that we have to change. And center of all this piece is, of course, 
internally, you need to build your APIs. You gotta have something like Amazon did with the, when they said the only way you can communicate is through APIs. So what happens? You gotta you got to uh, untangle the mess. Uh, and uh, what we did, uh, Danske Bank, I mean, we have this, what we call our uh, enterprise domain map. Domain map sort of just makes some bounded context if, through the domain driven design on what is different areas, like how do you group that into the logical bit and start, uh, start uh, uh, sort of cleaning up the big pile of mud. And if I, if I just dig down, I just show you this. this is, we have this layer called the foundation layer. The foundation layer is sort of, that's here where we have our system of records, that's here where I live. I serve all areas with uh, customer data because we all need to know where, where Jack lives, his address, and for regulatory purposes, and all that piece. And if Jack also has a business, we also need to provide that information. So, Dave Les, the second layer you sort of see with the blue and green, uh, that's sort of what we call our process layer or function layer, something that, you know, that provides actually products or values to our, our consumers. Displayed up in the experience layer where we have, you know, uh, our, um, our mobile bank and, uh, and all our apps and all that stuff. So, yeah, we provide uh, data to both of those guys. We break it down. So what do we have of our seven subdomains? Uh, we have seven from the customer. I already put something on the identity. We have how do you identify the customer? How do you, who, who are the advisories, uh, advisors? And uh, who are, uh, let's just take, take, I already mentioned the regulatory. We break that down further and we have this Q uh, domain map uh, where we have all our um, subdomains and we create all our objects uh, and we can start creating APIs. And if any of you attended my uh, colleague Christian's um, talk yesterday on how to eat an elephant, one Microsoft at a time, he explained that uh, what we did here was uh, taking each of these subdomains, encapsulate the mainframe, and, th and that's what we already did. And now what our next journey is, is actually just moving this stuff on cloud, so building data and functionality uh, onto the cloud. That's our next journey. But that's not the thing I'm going to uh, talk about right now. What I will uh, talk about is, um, so we did it. We did the encapsulation. Uh, we did, took all the best practices, what we read, what did Google do, what did uh, Amazon do, uh, all the literatures. We went, with, uh, we went with the enterprise architect of the banks, went to our consumers, what kind of details of, do you, do you want to have? Can we somehow extract, abstract the complexity from with the mainframe to something actually useful and intuitive and easy to understand? So that you don't get an, I don't know, 0025 code when you just want to know if this customer is a VIP customer or not. So that it actually some, so it becomes easy for the developers to use our APIs. And with that in mind, then um, we did it. We expected growth. Now people will use our APIs because they wanted them. They said they wanted them. Uh, and guess what? I guess you can all imagine what happened. Mm, slow growth. <laughs> not, not the hockey stick. Uh, and I think this will be the case for many banks or um, many financial institutions who will actually try this. Um, and this is a... Uh, we had some hard months uh, up, up before June uh, because suddenly it's the you got you get underneath the uh, uh, management microscope because why are people not using your APIs? We did this. You, we did this investment. Uh, did you really make the right APIs? Did you really do it the right way? Um, and you start to think, what? I guess we did the right way and search for answers. Um, and suddenly, um, yeah, you know. All the skeletons just comes out the closets, and you see what happens. Well, I'm just going to break it down to old habits, friction, and, and marketing. If I take old habits, then it's you might you can present you know uh, uh, you can present something that is brand new. You can use these REST APIs, use them instead of the old point-to-point uh, -point integrations. But people don't really want to change that much. That that's your issue. But well, I can use this piece. It works. Yeah, okay, it does. <laughs> uh, you see people from your own organization still providing all sort of um, 
uh, uh, I'm called integration forms, not the REST API, which was which is the strategic direction. So we are still providing them stuff, and they still have access to stuff. So why would they change? I wouldn't. So that's of course. Then we are come to the friction point, and that's the friction point that is um, where I have my dear uh, developers who actually wants to do the change. I mean, they want to use this, and they're normally from the uh, user experience layer uh, who has touched these technologies and know all of this cool stuff. And, uh, and it's just like, bam, they get so frustrated. What you see is, uh, okay, but how do I discover, how do I, I mean, it's the simple discovery tools to finding the right APIs. And, and then you, uh, they can't discover it. Like they go into the gateway or the discovery tool you have, and it's just, turns out that there are so many different stuff because people have just pushed things into there. Um, so, lack of documentation. Then we have a different issue, and that is uh, uh, security tokens. How do you create them? It's generated from our, our mainframe, but what if you're from a different platform? It becomes hard to consume. So there's a lot of friction uh, on this piece, and we see uh, normally developers they, they, they come in. You know, you see the happy developer just ah, I found this API, and they are met with uh, one weeks of uh, frustration getting onboarded and uh, before they can actually use the API. So that's sort of the story we see. Then we have the uh, the marketing as aspect, and uh, this is sort of okay. We are down in the uh, dungeon, sort of the you know. We are providing system of records. Uh, we, are, we are system of records. Right. Techies. Did we do the, our marketing thing? Mm, uh, perhaps we didn't. We were in a tight schedule, but did we really go out and sell our stuff? Did we sell our APIs to all the, de the development areas, saying this is what we have, come on, use it? Uh, and I think it's fair to say we didn't. Um, so something really uh, had to happen. And uh, then, uh, then what did we do? And we had, uh, I think this is sort of treat your APIs as a product. It's sort of, yes. We, um, treating your APIs as a product for us really meant uh, go out and sell your stuff. Uh, really just go out and sell your stuff. Uh, knocking on uh, CIO's doors, knocking on the development director's doors, knocking on everyone's doors also engineers and also architects, also business, and saying, we have it, come on, use it. And I think that whenever time I had these meetings, something like just gradually changes. Some, something momentum, just a bit, I feel, have this feeling that things change. We also see, of course, those who are using our APIs, collect the feedback from them. What are, I mean, uh, is there any, New data that you need. Is there anything that we need to change, etc.? Start, start. Uh, so actually, just you know, collect the metrics. That's just what I want to say on it. Um, and then, and then also um, start cleaning up on some of this stuff. So if you have yourself a lot of APIs uh, in dubious state because they've been developed in some a couple of years ago, where we didn't have the domain-driven design, then you will find uh, something very granular, very specific, and it's just a, another point-to-point -point integration, which is something we definitely don't want to have uh, being an area that supports multiple areas. On the improve the uh, development journey, of course, um, things need to be easy, things need to be smooth, because otherwise, developers will do something differently. They will not use your API. Uh, but the, the feedback we got was, but gents, your documentation is actually pretty good. We understand it. But it's actually all the stuff that leads up to consuming your, your API. So that entails working with uh, the uh, infrastructure guys, working with the security guys, uh, always pushing, like, can we do a change? Can we do something in this piece? Uh, can we improve it? And most of the times you just go, okay, it's like, it feels like we do, it takes us three months, it takes six months, and it's sort of, are we really, are we really uh, uh, working together as being infrastructure and application areas? That sort of, uh, but it's getting better, it's getting much better. Um, I will also uh, 
and, and that's just and that's also uh, improving that means improving the discovery improving the uh, the documentation all around in the in the bank that's not just for our area um, so that you can actually understand what's what's there on changing culture uh, and that's uh, I think it's a uh, some, if I just have to sum up a lot of things that these sessions I've heard about, it's all about culture. And yes, it is a lot about uh, culture if you do any API strategy, because it's not really, people don't just change, uh, and you've got to do it some in, in small steps, you've got to do a bit of friction, you've got to be nudging, uh, all the way. And what we find that it works quite well, I'm just naming two, uh, two specific things, if you put a deadline to stuff, saying we will not support this uh, this old way of uh, integrating, this point-to-point -point integration, we will stop that in three months, then people will react. And I think that's probably one of the strongest weapons, but of course you need some buy-in from managers and all that stuff, but that will work. And they will interact with you, uh, that's for sure. And then you can always bargain on uh, if it's three months or four months. The other thing is on the change culture is the um, uh, it's your own organization. In our, in our own area, we see we see people <laughs> uh, actually developing stuff, saying, "But why are you doing this? Why are you not doing APIs?" And you need to change that. You need to change that cultural mindset. That instead of just doing what you've always done, you get, you have to push the people saying change it and we put some this took some uh, design architecture boards in place that says you gotta scrutinize everything that comes in to ensure that it actually follows the direction we want to go actually there's one, uh, one more point uh, the third point is also well we all know that the, the regulatory agenda is so massive we all know that business wants something right now and it can only be too slow and of course we could go doing the mainframe way and it will take us a quarter of the time, but that will never get us out of there, and it will never, uh, we will never get the APIs in place which we want. So what we do is then uh, be becoming sort of, we, I mean, people start being in, becomes annoyed with us because we say no, we want to do it our way, we want to do it, you know, the, the strategic way, and that's a discussion we take all the way up to uh, to our CIO all the time, and then we come back, and sometimes we win, and sometimes we lose, but it's sort of a uh, it's 75% in the, in, the, in the area we want to go, so that's always good. I'm just gonna... So, of course, uh, we are now waiting for the graph. What happened? Um, well, not hockey stick, but at least something happened. Uh, and uh, you, you sense, as an API a product owner, you sense, like, when people start calling you saying, hey, uh, I heard from this guy that you have some APIs then you know that something is going on. People are like, hey, um, by the way, uh, John, uh, please come here and talk about uh, the APIs that you have. Yes, okay, I'll go to business, I'll talk. Um, and that's sort of the, the momentum when you start feeling something is changing. And people are also coming up saying, hey, your APIs, they are damn easy to consume. Uh, it's the best API I consumed in Danske Bank. And then you're all, and now you're like ground feeling something is working. Um, and I'll just, uh, before I, I end my talk, uh, also on demonstrating value, I'm just going to give uh, what we've done here. We, of course, tracked consumption, also tracked volume, uh, but it's like show back what's the, what's the benefit for, uh, for, for the business who actually did this piece. And uh, what we have done is sort of a very rudimentary way of saying, well, guy, you want to use my API? Fine. But how does my API help in terms of uh, your revenue and uh, time to market, uh, cost uh, cost reduction. You're just saying, and is it two percent? Is it one percent? And we sort of sort of bargain a bit, but it's just like a way to get there. And I mean, the model is not super sophisticated, but it's just those thoughts that you need to have, and just take the talk up front, um, because in the end, you would also need to you know demonstrate that value and having that. And people have signed off something like that. They don't have to, you know take any real cost out of it, but you need to, you need to demonstrate that piece. That was, uh, that was my talk. It was, I, I think it was different what, that you anticipated, but I hope you all enjoyed it. You can find me uh, uh, yeah, on uh, LinkedIn, 